Well, this is Father Adam, and I'm so excited to have this time to reflect with you on this immense privilege and gift and chance that we have been handed as a people of God to re-examine ourselves, whether our allegiance has been placed in a business, in an institution, or whether our allegiance is to Jesus Christ himself, the source of our life, the one in whom we are supposed to live and breathe and have our being. It's all supposed to be about Jesus, not about a religion. You see, religion is there in our lives to tell us what to do. But faith in our lives comes to answer the question for us of who am I? Whose am I? Who do I belong to? Why am I here? Religion, a lot of times, can enslave people, bind people. In fact, the word religion comes from the re Latin word religare, which means to bind. That's where you get the Spanish word liga, rubber band, from. Because it makes people into slaves. And if I'm all about religion, which is rules and regulations, then I am led to judgment in my life. I pass judgment on other people. I feel like the Pharisees did. Oh, look at all these other people. They don't have what I have. Look how they act. Look how they live. I'm somehow better than other people. And faith in our lives doesn't make us better. The fact that I'm Catholic or the fact that I'm Christian doesn't make me better. The fact that I'm baptized doesn't make me better. What it does is it gives me more responsibility to be better. But a lot of times, religious people, and this is the number one charge that is leveled at us by people who are not religious in the world, that we somehow act like we are holier than thou. We come to church and we pray and we say, oh Jesus, I love you so very much. But at the same time as I'm praying, I better not even pass Ask yes, Lord, because I, oh, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I don't want to offend uh, uh, or, or make it seem like I don't have things together. You know, I'm, I'm such a perfect person. Oh, but at the same time, look at the person that just came in. Look how they're dressed, you know, and they don't wear a head covering like I do, and they don't, they don't, uh, they don't go up to communion like I do. Oh, they don't fold hands like I do. They don't sing like I do. They don't do this like I do. We can have this Pharisee attitude in us and particularly people who may go to communion and uh, they focus on who's receiving communion the right way or who's receiving communion not the right way or, you know, uh, I don't think they've been to confession in a very long time and they don't look like they're dressed like they're, they're supposed to and look how them and then and, and all of this. And it's like, you know, you go to communion and you don't say, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But you say, Lord, my neighbor's not worthy to receive you. All these people who so often come to me and say, Father, so-and-so is going to communion. And they're not supposed to. Well, why are they not supposed to? Well, you know, Father, they live with so-and-so. And, well, you know, Father, they, they're sleeping together. Uh, and, well, you know, Father, they're doing things. I mean, do I serve as a pillow in their bedroom? Or do you? Mind your own business. You are supposed to be about loving people and praying for people and serving people and having compassion and understanding for people. Not about thinking what people are doing or how they're living. All that energy that you're spending thinking about what other people are doing and how they're misbehaving according to your criteria and in your line of thinking. Spend that energy praying for them. Or are you more powerful than God? Huh? If God can move mountains, don't you think he can move a little human heart? So all that energy that you're spending on judging people and on thinking what others are doing, spend it praying for them. And God will change people's hearts in God's time, not in our time. We are to love people and serve people and accompany people and listen to people and not talk at people. That's how we are supposed to be as people of faith. Now, the institutional church right now, the structural church, the liturgical church has died at this time during this pandemic. Good. What an opportunity for us to rediscover our faith, not our religiosity, but our faith to discover our inner personal relationship with the living God inside of our own temple, in, inside of me, the temple which is me, the temple of the Holy Spirit, because God lives in me. 
And if you feel like you can't function, you're like your faith cannot function, like many people say, oh, I, I can't do this. I don't have communion. I don't have confession. I don't have the rituals. No, I can't have Holy Week. I can't have all these practices, these, these traditions that I have been used to. If you feel like you cannot function without them, then it was all about religion for you, not about faith. For Faith expresses itself in sacraments and in rituals. But these institutional practices are not our faith. The practices are not the source. They are channels to get to the source. But there are other channels to get at the source besides the sacraments and the rituals and the practices. The source is Jesus Christ. And church is first and foremost a community. It comes from the word ecclesia in Greek, which means an assembly, a gathering of the people who, as they celebrate the rituals, are trying to get at the source. But the source is present in your own temple, inside of your heart, in your own domestic church. So you are supposed to rediscover that source right now. You know, looking at the church for many years now, I can see that most of our faith up to now has not been faith, but religiosity in many ways. All about religion and its practices, but no faith. Only traditions and customs and all these things that we go through, you know, dotting our I's and crossing our T's. And all we are doing is making people feel comfortable and comforted for a short while, while these practices are able to be accessed by them. But there is in many ways no faith growth, no building of a relationship with God. So you take these practices away and for many people, a crash has happened. And how wonderful. Because in order for something to rise, it has to die. And so maybe the death of this, of this religion in you, this adherence to an institution and practices and customs will be a birth of a relationship with Jesus Christ, the source, and a renewal of your faith. And so what a gift we have been handed to confront this prevalent attitude in religious people because religious practices and rituals afford its adherents the chance to explore the seed of faith. But the practices of these rituals sometimes give people a false sense of security and comfort so that they get stuck on the practice of these religious rituals and traditions, and there's no growth. As long as I get my communion and make it to Mass on Sunday and go to confession and don't eat meat on Friday, I'm okay. I'm going to heaven, and the rest of the people, well, they're going to California. That is the attitude in many, many people. Like right now, people are saying, what if I die and I can't go to confession and I have a mortal sin? I'm going to go to hell. Even the Pope has said that all you need is to make a perfect act of contrition and you'll be fine. What kind of a God do you believe in that would send you to hell without having the opportunity to go to confession during a pandemic? If you believe in that kind of a God, then you can have him because I don't want him. So all of these voices right now in the church, you know, in all the people, the religious people, that have had their world turned upside down because the institution is closed. The institutional practices of the business are dead. Are there, all of this is there to expose the emptiness of these practices in the life of so many people. That it was all about these rituals and not about Jesus. It was empty and you can't, Fill your emptiness with rituals and practices and traditions because you take them away and there is nothing. You can only faith, you can only fill them with Jesus Christ because he is the same yesterday, today and forever and he changes not and he is always with us and he can never go away. Everything can go away. The institution can go away. The business can close. The building can close. But Jesus remains always with us and that's what we have a chance right now, a gift to rediscover. In 2016, I went back to visit some of my family in the Ukraine, in the... Soviet Union, where 
the communists, right after the Second World War, shut down all of the Catholic churches, expelled priests, killed people, killed priests. People were not allowed to practice their faith. And today as we walked in, the church is more alive than ever. It has resurrected. It died during that period of some 46 years. It was, it seemed to be dead, but it remained alive. Jesus remained alive. And he was then resurrected after 46 years to a more beautiful church because the church in the Ukraine has never been more alive than today. It has never flourished like it is, it is today after this period that has happened. And so, God is permitting this time of death for something beautiful to rise. God is saying, you know, can you be with me without the sacraments in your life, without the building, without the business? What a blessed time we are experiencing in the church. What a privileged time. It's not a blessed time for the business. You know, the business is suffering. It can't pay its bills. You know, maybe some people are going to actually sell their mansions and give up their uh, first class tickets and give up uh, their luxurious lifestyles. Some of the leadership might have to actually do that. Uh, mm, you know, some, some may have to give up some of their salaries or their expensive outings. Uh, you know, I won't get too far here in my comments, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe that is a good thing for when the business is closed, you know, the institution is really suffering, but we have been for way too long in, in the Catholic church, all about protecting the institution. Look what we did with the sexual abuse crisis of children and vulnerable adults, where all of these bishops and higher-ups in the church were all about protecting the business at the expense of thousands and thousands of children and vulnerable adults who were sexually abused and exploited by predators. And these predators were protected all in the name of protecting the institution. This was done by religious people. Religious people did this. Not people of faith because if they were cemented in Jesus Christ, they would not have been protecting an institution. But because it was all about practices and rituals and protecting buildings and businesses and their rich lifestyle, they allowed so many people to suffer and have their lives ruined. And so death came as a result of that scandal to so many institutions. And that is a good thing because something new is rising, hopefully rising, and something new is rising as a result of the death in so many of the institution, the business church right now. And good, that's a good thing. Let the institution die. You know, let the Going church die, I call it. This, this idea of I'm going to church. This kind of, of, of church where it's all about worshiping and, and, and doing everything all for the sake of, uh, of rituals and, and, and practices. This type of a church that in its practice supposedly looks to be with God, but its heart is far away from God, makes God vomit. The prophet Isaiah says, this people appears to be with me, but their hearts are far away from me. And that to those of us who may find ourselves in that type of a frame of mind, where it's all about the institution, God says to us, come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep me apart. Long have I waited for your coming. Come to me. You know, I think God has had enough of this religious institutional business circus that has been going on. Right now, he is handing us this immense opportunity as a church, this coronavirus pandemic, to re-examine ourselves as a people of God. And that which has taken place where the institution of the church has closed, you know, is a good thing. It is a great thing. It's an immense opportunity for us to get back to the source. And the source 
is Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.